it's Bill with Blue Line Off-Road and today we are starting the Georgia Traverse so uh, it's going to be a good time. Stick around. Traverse today. We're heading out of the concrete jungle, otherwise known as Atlanta. Um, heading north on Interstate 75. If you don't know much about the Georgia Traverse, it's 390 miles, about 250 of them or so are off pavement. So um, I'm going to plan to do this in three days. Today's Thursday. I'm going to try to get home by Saturday so I can spend Easter with my wife. So stick around. We'll get closer to the start and uh, we'll pick it up there. All right, stay tuned. A quick stop at the Walmart for some much needed supplies before heading to the Georgia Bama state line. In a quarter mile, turn right onto Georgia 100 North. Okay, we are right at the state line, Alabama, Georgia state line, which is the starting point for me if you're running it west to east, um, although the, the route is normally planned to run east to west, but we're running it in reverse. So uh, I'm sitting at the star, at, on, on the state line right now. So um, there's some pavement ahead of me. Um, today is a lot of pavement actually compared to off pavement. But we'll get that done, and uh, we'll hit some trails here pretty soon. Keep you posted. I know this is pavement, but it's just so good to finally be moving. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon, so kind of late, but yep, we're moving. It didn't take long to get to the end of pavement and to some dirt and mud, and as you can see, a mud puddle. There's a lot of mud puddles on the Georgia Traverse, at least there were for me. But it was good to finally get off of pavement and get on, uh, on some dirt and gravel and mud. Now I'm coming along here and uh, I had yet to air down my tires. I'm still running street pressure, so uh, a little bumpy. And uh, so I needed to make a quick pit stop up here pretty soon to uh, drop it. PSI down a little bit. Yeah, I about had enough of this. I'm driving along and every little bump is just beating me up, so time to stop. Time to uh, drop the PSI down about 15 pounds or so per tire. Yes, this is much better. Uh, I dropped it down to about 25 pounds or so per tire. Don't like to go any lower than that, especially when I'm going back and forth on and off of pavement. Don't want to take the time to have to air up and air back down every time. So. 25 to me seems like a, uh, a good middle, middle ground. Yeah, I know, I lied. I said no video of the Forerunner. Had to get a little bit. Gotta get this a little video. All right, first water crossing of the Georgia Traverse. If you like me, you love water crossings for some reason. I don't know what it is. I love water crossings, big, small, deep, shallow. I don't care. But if I come across a water crossing, I'm almost certainly going to get it on video. So I had to get this one. Now 
Now, since I got such a late start, I'm coming really close to the first campsite for the night. It's getting close to about 5.30 in the evening. Like I said earlier, I started about 1.30, so I've been going about four hours, not including the time I left Atlanta and drove up the interstate. Went to the Walmart and every place else. So I'm getting close to the first campsite of the night. All right, end of day one. We are set up for uh, the first night here at the Hickey Creek. I'm sorry, Hickey Gap. Hickey Gap campsite. And uh, it's primitive, no running water, no showers, none of that stuff. They just have, they do have established campsites, so it makes it a little bit easier to level out to uh, make a tent level. Um, do have a creek here. Not too bad. Not a bad place to spend your first night, huh? Um, you have a picnic table to set up, so I'm going to get some dinner going here pretty quick and uh, get that set up and uh, do some uh, downloads, get some Facebook posts tonight and uh, get that done too. And uh, other than that, it's going to be a relaxing night. It's a beautiful day. It's about 68 degrees, not a cloud in the sky, slight breeze. And it's going to be a nice night. Tent is, uh, tent's all set up. So we are, uh, we are looking good. All right, end of day one. All right, good morning, everybody. It is day two of the Georgia Traverse. Um, it was a good night. I've already got everything packed up out of the tent, ready to pack it up. Um, chilly out here it's probably up 40s uh, the road up there the trail uh, a little busier than you would think it's heard a car at about 12 30 heard a couple more at four to five six o'clock maybe so there's a lot of people running on this on this road we're kind of remote but it's a pretty busy road considering i want to get uh tent packed up clean up a little bit and get up out of here and uh, got a long day of driving so let's get moving okay we are in loaded up it's 8 20 a little later than i hoped but uh, ready to go um 41 degrees outside a little brisk but um we'll get going and uh see what today brings all right stay tuned now, a little more forest service road before I get to something a little bit more interesting once I've got a little farther down the route. And you can see now we have some uh, some ruts coming up here. Actually some fairly deep, some deep ruts here. Um, this is nothing difficult, nothing Nothing too big. Uh, it's certainly better than what I was driving on yesterday, mostly uh, mostly forest service roads and obviously, of course, pavement. So this is definitely much better. And then we got some more ruts coming up here. Again, nothing, nothing big. This adds a little bit of fun to the route. Instead of just driving down a dirt road. You know, I come around this turn and I see this low-lying tree. And I didn't think anything about it at first until I got a little bit closer. And when I realized that I needed eight feet or so to clear my rooftop tent. And, uh, no problems. No problems at all. It looked lower than it really was. Now we have some more ruts and all, but also another low-lying tree. Didn't think anything about it either uh, until I got a little bit closer. And when I got there, I realized it was it was well beyond eight feet, so I was I was clear here too. I come through here, some more ruts. The route's getting a little bit a little bit rougher, but. Another fun thing is that right through here, I get, actually get a little bit off camber. Nothing difficult, but it is fun. It's, it's, it's definitely the funnest section of the route so far, at least for me. You 
Yeah, some more ruts and, and rough terrain through here. Nothing difficult. Not at all. But it uh, slow you down a little bit. If you're actually trying to make time on this section, you're going to be out of luck. This is uh, kind of slow moving through here. Coming along this section, you see some uh, some mud puddles. Some are bigger than others. You know, here's a pretty good size one. But the thing about mud puddles is that you don't know how deep they are until you get in them. You know, some are going to look like they're going to be deep. Some look like they won't be. And then you get a surprise like this one right here. It's a lot deeper than I thought it was going to be. In fact, you can see by the hood of my Forerunner how much it bounced back and forth. I left a little bit of the hood of the Forerunner in the in the uh, camera view just so you could see how much it moves throughout the video so um, that gives you an indication of just how rough the terrain is sometimes. This section here is called Big Frog Loop. We're in Tennessee now. Um, just south of the border back in Georgia is called Calhuta. But in Tennessee, it's called Big Frog Loop. Um, I, I think it's the funnest section of the entire Georgia Traverse. The ruts are deeper, the rocks are bigger. Um, it's slow, slow moving. But uh, again, it's it's a much funner section of the route than some of the others. And uh, in my opinion, I think it's the best section of the entire Georgia Traverse. If you're looking for cell coverage throughout Big Frog Loop or even much of the Georgia Traverse, you're going to be out of luck. Uh, this section in Tennessee is very, very remote and there is little to no cell coverage throughout this section. So if you're out here by yourself, like I am, and you have a mechanical issue or you get stuck or something, you, you're not going to be able to call anybody unless you have another means of communication. This is kind of a fun section. More ruts, more rocks, obviously, but you know, adding an incline to it, too, which makes it a little more fun. I'm going along here on Big Frog Loop, and I'm I, I'm really enjoying this section. Like I said earlier, I believe Big Frog Loop is, in my opinion, the the best section of the entire Georgia Traverse. The problem is, I planned on driving 150 miles or so today, and uh, I've been driving now for about five hours, and I'd only covered about 55 miles. So unless things open up here and I can make some time, I'm going to be really behind schedule. Although, like I said, I'm enjoying the route, I'm enjoying this part of the route, this section specifically, but I really needed to get some time. I'm still moving along Big Frog Loop, uh, really enjoying this section. Uh, again, I think this is a very, very fun section. But I'm not making much time, uh, real slow moving. Um, but I really needed things to open up here soon so I can make time and get to my next campsite for the night. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna keep enjoying it while I can and keep moving along. As you can see, some other inclines are coming up here. Fun section, I like inclines too. I like inclines too, especially when you add the element of rougher terrain in it. I think uh, I think those sections are a lot of fun.
again, I kept the hood of the Forerunner in the viewfinder just a little bit so you can see how rough some of these sections are. Um, again, if you want to get a better perspective of how rough they are, look at the hood. Don't pay attention to the, to the image itself. The GoPro image stabilization is excellent. So um, that's not going to give you a good indication of how rough the terrain is. Look at the hood of the Forerunner. It's going to give you a much better indication of how rough things are. Now I have finally exited Big Frog Loop, and I'm I'm now along Duncan Ridge Road, uh, moving moving a little bit faster. Uh, Duncan Ridge Road is a nice section. It's consistent elevations of 3,500 to 4,000 or so, and a lot smoother terrain. So I'm able to move a little bit more quickly than I was on Big Frog Loop. I had actually planned to camp somewhere along Duncan Ridge Road. But uh, the weather, I know it doesn't look like it now, but the weather forecast for the night was rain and potential for storms. And sleeping at close to 4,000 feet with 200 foot trees above your head maybe not be the best idea. So I kept going and I ended up pulling into Vogel State Park at about 7 or 7.30 at night. I really wasn't planning on, on camping at a state park, but Vogel was at the right place at the right time. And I ended up pulling in there for uh, campsite number two for the night. I didn't get any video of Vogel State Park at my camp. Nothing really to see there at the state park with a bunch of other campers, so uh, no video there. But we are on now on day three, and weather is significantly different. Cloudy, and you can tell that it rained last night. No storms, luckily, but we are uh, on day three and moving along. Yeah, we're moving along here, and we get to cross Helton Creek. Uh, nothing deep. No big deal, but it is a water crossing, so you know I'm going to get it on video. So we get to cross Helton Creek here and, and move up, and you'll see here in a minute that if crossing Helton Creek wasn't enough for you, stick around for a minute or so, and we get to cross it again and go back in the other direction. You might see some houses through the trees there, I think you can. They don't look to me to be lived in all year long. They look more like vacation homes for some folks, but you will see some houses throughout this section uh, along Helton Creek. And here we get to cross Helton Creek again. Um, another water crossing, some more video. A little wider, a little bit deeper, but uh, the second crossing here of, uh, of Helton Creek. Not much to see here obviously with this paved section but I, I wanted to get a little video of just how low lying and thick these clouds were. Elevation here is 2,500, 2,800 feet or so and again just to demonstrate just how low lying and thick these clouds were this was a good spot for, the, for that video. You can see here we're starting another section of the Georgia Traverse. This section is called Trey Mountain. It's a really really good section. It's a highlight of the trip has a variety of terrain. It's got the ruts like you see here and the rocks like you see here, but it's got a variety of different types of surfaces. Um, you can see with the, the rain that came in last night too, it uh, gives you a different perspective of the, of the trail when it's cloudy versus when it's clear. I tried to get a decent amount of video on Trey Mountain um, because it was I was on Trey Mountain for such a long period of time that 
and I didn't want to exclude a lot of the videos, so I wanted to make sure I got as much as I could that would give you a really good indication of what Trey Mountain is like. And uh, you'll, you'll see as we as we move through, it's, it's a variety of terrain again, like I said. A lot of ruts and a lot of rocks. You'll see some level areas. You'll see a lot of mud and even some, uh, there's several remote camp spots um, along Trey Mountain as well. As you can see, there's a lot more mud puddles here at the top. And as you're about to see, some of them are a lot deeper than they looked. So uh, again, you don't know much about a mud puddle until you actually get in it. You can also see some camping locations here on the right, uh, dispersed camping spots. You'll see those several locations along, uh, along Tray Mountain. In a way, I, uh, I like the, the cloudy atmosphere. It gives you a different perspective of the environment, but I, I do wish that it, it would have been clearer so I could have seen the views, some of the peaks and valleys from here, because I am roughly 3,500, 3,800 feet in elevation, so I've, I would have had some good views if the, if the weather would have been a little better. This is a pretty slow moving section of Trey Mountain. Much of Trey Mountain is slow moving, a lot like Big Frog Loop with the rocks and the ruts and the bumps. It, it, it was a fun section um, nonetheless, and I really enjoyed this section of Trey Mountain. I need to apologize for that annoying tapping sound that you hear. It wasn't until later in the day before I realized where that was coming from. So you'll hear it stop later on, but right now I'm, I'm sorry. It, it's annoying to me too. When I reached the top of Trey Mountain, the going down the other side, Trey Mountain Road down the other side was closed. So. No big deal. Uh, I expected that actually from the website, so I simply took Indian Grove Gap Road down the other side of Trey Mountain. It was a fun trip too. I really enjoyed that section. I probably didn't really need four-wheel drive on Trey Mountain or much of the Georgia Traverse, actually. But in this section, you know, I did put it in four high for much of Trey Mountain just because of the weather. I didn't want to have any wheel slippage. So uh, again, I'm in four high for much of this section along Trey Mountain. Again, I wish I'd have had better views with the clearer weather, but like I said earlier, I really think the clouds add a different element here. It looks different atmosphere altogether. You can see some more remote 
camping spots here on the left. Like I said, there's there are plenty of dispersed camping locations along Trey Mountain. So if you're in the area and you need a place to camp, there is no shortage of, of campsites along Trey Mountain. see one of these pull-offs here on the left you know if you're feeling real squirrely with your rig and you want to give it a shot go right ahead um, like I said earlier I am by myself and the last thing I needed to do out here was to get stuck or have a mechanical issue with no cell coverage so uh, but if you're feeling froggy go ahead and give these sections a shot As I continued along Indian Grove Gap Road, it eventually turns into Corbin Creek Road as I continued to descend down the other side of Trey Mountain. You can see as I continue to descend down Trey Mountain, the clouds are not as thick and the skies seem to be a little bit brighter as I get a little bit lower in elevation. Even though the skies do look a little brighter, it is false hope. I, I would not see the sun until near the end of the day, almost when I was done with the Georgia Traverse. I am now completely off of Trey Mountain and I've started a section called Dick's Creek. This is much more level, um, a lot more water here though in mud puddles and water crossings as you can see a small one here. Um, but again, much different from Trey Mountain, but a, a fun section still. This road gets its name from, you guessed it, Dick's Creek. And we actually get to cross Dick's Creek uh, shortly here in just a minute. Um, I actually believe Dick's Creek is the deepest water crossing on the entire Georgia Traverse, even deeper than the Tulula River. Not as wide as the, as the river, obviously, but I do believe it is a little bit deeper and the deepest water crossing on the entire route. You'll actually see several camping spots along Dick's Creek as well. So if you're if you're off a of Trey Mountain and you still need a place to camp, you should be able to find a place along Dick's Creek. Here's where we get to cross Dick's Creek. Again, it doesn't look like much, but it is a little deeper than it looks. Not difficult, not difficult at all, but I believe it is the deepest water crossing on the Georgia Traverse. Again, crossing the Dix Creek is not difficult, but uh, I wouldn't suggest you take your family minivan through it. But it wasn't hard, it wasn't hard at all. If you have any kind of ground clearance whatsoever, you shouldn't have any issue with water, even after rains like now. But uh, again, it wasn't difficult at all. I am starting Charlie's Creek here. 
I was really looking forward to Charlie's Creek. It was one of the highlights of the Georgia Traverse. I'm finally glad to be running this section of the of the route. So uh, I'll try to get some decent video of, of Charlie's Creek. wouldn't say that I was disappointed in Charlie's Creek Road, but I did learn uh, recently then that it had been regraded about a year or two prior. So it used to be a lot different than it is now. It's a lot smoother than I expected uh, and wasn't difficult at all. In fact, all of it, if much of it, if not all of it, can be done probably in two wheel drive right now. Charlie's Creek is probably the most popular section of the entire Georgia Traverse. It's a very popular section for, uh, for off-roaders. There are a lot of campsites along Charlie's Creek Road. In fact, when you get to the bottom of the hill here, you'll see some campers, some tents behind the trees. Uh, it's just one of the many campsites along Charlie's Creek. As you get to the bottom here again, the road will bend right and we get to cross Flat Branch. Flat Branch is a very shallow and narrow water crossing, but you know, I gotta get it on video. Like I said, Dix Creek Road is one of the more popular sections on the Georgia Traverse, and you, you see right here that run into three Jeeps coming at me, so I uh, had to pull over, let those guys by. You know, the Jeeps are finally out of the way. I can, uh, I can keep going. I know you can't see it in the video, but down the hill to the right is the actual Dix Creek, which as you can probably figure out where this road gets its name. I mentioned earlier about how Dix Creek Road had been regraded in the last year or two. You can see here where they filled in some of the must have been a fairly deep rut. They filled it in with gravel. You see an older Bronco coming up here. It's an older fifth gen Bronco. Uh, he was able to pull over, let me by. Um, it's good to see those older fifth gen Broncos on the road still. You don't see too many of those, particularly today with all the hubbub about the newer Broncos. So it's good to see the older fifth gen Broncos still on the road. 
the good news is that Bronco wasn't white, so I was pretty sure it wasn't O.J. Simpson. Here I run into somebody else. You've been watching the video, you can tell I had no place to pull over. I had no place behind me. He did, apparently. He backed up 100 feet or so, was able to get a good pull off spot and let me by. This is actually a pretty nice Tundra. He had, it, he had it fairly well equipped. Yeah, you can thank me now that that annoying tapping sound that we had earlier is gone. So, like I said, I figured out where that was coming from and finally took care of it. There are plenty of campsites along Charlie's Creek Road, so if you want to camp in this area, you should have absolutely no trouble finding a suitable place to camp. And as I come to the end of Charlie's Creek Road, um, which in going my direction, I run into the Tallulah River going west to east. If you're going east to west, you'll cross the Tallulah before starting Charlie's Creek, but I um, Again, I'm going west to east, so I'm at the end of Charlie's Creek Road. I'm about to cross the Tallulah River. You know, crossing a river can be kind of dramatic for some. It's really not that big of a deal. I mentioned earlier that I, that I think that Dix Creek is actually the deepest water crossing on the Georgia Traverse. And I still think it is. And you'll see on, on the Tallulah River here that it's clear and it's, it's not deep at all. We even had rain last night, so it's not deep here especially on the western side. When you get on the eastern side when I'm, where I'm going to exit, it's a little bit deeper, but still, I don't believe it's as deep as, as Dix Creek. One of the best things here is I get to wash off a lot of that mud in my undercarriage. Get a good, uh, get a good car wash here for the forerunner. This is a section called Coleman River Road or Old Coleman River Road, one or the other. Um, not a difficult section, but it's actually, it's pretty good. It's after um, Dix Creek for me and after a little bit of pavement to get to it. So it's not, it's a, it's a pretty good trail and I wanted to get a little bit of video of that as well. What wasn't too good about Coleman River Road was that it intersects Abe Gap Road, which is closed at that intersection. And Abe Gap Road had a couple of water crossings that I wanted to do, but since it was closed, I had to actually turn around and come back and go back down the old Coleman Road that I had just completed. This is Hale Ridge Road. Uh, the route dips briefly north into North Carolina, and much of the section in North Carolina is actually on paved road. But as you continue along the route, it'll take you back south into Georgia, and this is, as I said, Hale Ridge Road. The Hale Ridge Road is actually a fairly popular road. I saw hikers on this road. I saw even saw some folks on horseback. So. Um, it's a very popular section uh, of the Georgia Traverse. Yeah, Hale Ridge Road is actually nothing more than a gravel road. Very easy, very easy. Uh, so I, I started the Georgia Traverse easy on pavement, actually much of it at the Alabama border. And I'm finishing near the South Carolina border on a very easy, what appears to be a gravel road for a service road. So I started easy and I'm finishing easy. So a good way to 
starting in the route. is it for the Georgia Traverse. Um, I am headed back I-40 East. There were some better parts of that than others. Some are were better than I expected. Others were, eh, I was a little disappointed in a couple of road closures. Eh, it's just, just a hassle to have to double back. And, but uh, I kind of expected it given the website, but uh, it's still a hassle. Um, anyway, if you like the video, go ahead and please check the uh, like button and subscribe too. And that way you'll be notified of any other videos I put out. I do a lot, I try to do a lot of reviews on things, so um, hopefully that'll be helpful to anybody who wants to watch. So again, uh, hit the like and hit the subscribe. And uh, it's Bill with Blue Line Off-Road, and we will see you on the trail. Thanks for watching.